When it comes to video games, you can't beat the golden era of the arcade. There's something magical about the endless simplicity and replayability of games like Pac-Man, Galaga, Daytona USA, and many other classics. And while fan games and mods are fun and all, nothing beats a fresh original experience. Made by Pixel Games, Dona Dodo is an action platformer where you play as Billy Burns on the quest to stop this dodo from stealing your donuts. Special guests such as Sniffy, Stinky, and Winky work with the dodo in order to stop you on your donut catching adventure. One thing I love about this game is how it takes inspiration from existing classics and spins it into a way to make its own unique game that has its own identity rather than trying to be the next Mario. While making this video, I got a hold of Zaphosh, the creator of the game, and asked him where the idea for these characters came from. Shoutouts to Dorochi for reading his answers, by the way. I can't really say where the idea came from. It came just like that along the way. Once the playground was working, I needed a bad guy, so I thought about this really greedy dodo. Last donut. <laughs> At the same time, the player needs a challenge to beat the game, which in turn led to the donuts. The game cycle is born. As for the characters, I usually design them right away in pixel art, so I have no other concept art for now. Billy Burns did not change much over his nine iterations, but he became more charismatic, confident, and friendly over time. One thing that remains consistent throughout the entire game is how tight the controls are. I never felt like I was cheated out of a jump, or there was some sort of cheap jank mechanic that would kill me unintentionally. Minor things like changing your direction midair and the instantaneous snap of climbing are often taken for granted. So when asking him about the tight controls he said, I agree, bad controls can totally ruin the experience. In fact, I have terrible memories of how ladders work back in the old arcade games. I kept getting stuck on those. Things like not being able to influence jumping would also lead to frustration and cheap deaths. So while the game looks like an old arcade game, it's meant to control better. For some actions, I stuck to the old formula though, like not being able to move the player when falling. This way you can walk off a ledge to collect a donut while relying on a totally predictable trajectory. Another thing I have to praise is the stage layout and diversity. There are five unique stages that have something special to offer and keep you on your toes. Stage 1, Funhouse Fiasco, is a great first level to get the feel of things. The ladders are snappy, and the layout is easy to read thanks to the great use of color and depth in the stage. A few rats run amok, but they're easy to avoid. And last but not least, the toilet hunts you down like a madman. Keep in mind you can't jump over it, so evading it by skillfully maneuvering around the stage is key. All the while, the dodo drops some questionable projectiles on you from above. Stage 2, Construction Site Chaos, is similar to the first stage, but now has a big gap in the middle, all the while fire chases you down from above, and to top it off, the dodo spits at you. My only word of advice would be to watch out when getting the final dodo, as it's very easy to get psyched out when it moves up and down. Okay, come on. Donut time. ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! Stage 3, Ferris Wheel Frenzy, is probably the most impressive in the list. While it has much less area to walk on, you get to maneuver through a non-stop ferris wheel while deadly balloons shoot upwards, and you share an uncomfortable ride with a dodo that did not invite you on said date. Stage 4, Candy Store Crush introduces climbable ropes with noticeably less platforms while the dodo drops down hazards via the candy machines, depending on which side you're on. Baking skills be damned, my boy can work a pole. <laughs> While there's a lot less that can hit you, it's easy to be caught off guard. Stage 5 is Dodo's Lair, and while it may look straightforward, the real threat comes from the doors that warp you around. And the return of Stinky, who actually kind of reminds me of the toilets from Captain Underpants, but I'm sure there's no correlation. Anyway, be sure you pay attention to the occasional boulder that drops, because that kept throwing me off time and time again. Probably because when you move from one side of the screen to the other, you'll pop out horizontally, but when the boulder does it, it just moves down a level, so keep that in mind. After stage 5 is the bonus round, where you can amass points by bouncing on this pumpkin to collect extra donuts. And believe me, it's a lot harder than it looks. But when you master it, it feels pretty good. When you think about it, making an arcade game means lots of replayability and level design tweaks. If it's too easy, players will grow bored. But if it's too hard and complicated, it leads to frustration. So what did the levels look like initially during development? Did you nail the layout on your first try, or did you have to make a lot of changes? And which stage is your favorite? The first stage designs are really simple, to get the feeling right for the mechanics in each level. 
Here's an example of how things started out. Then comes a lot of trial and error, playtesting, changing things around, etc. Once it all starts coming together, I spend more time on the final visuals. I think my favorite level is Ferris Wheel Frenzy. The music is crazy and the mechanics are fun. Smiley face. Now after we finish stages 1 through 5 and complete the bonus stage, like all good arcade games, we have to go for another round. The good news is that all our progress wasn't a dream unlike some games. Most changes you'll find here are to be expected, such as enemies moving faster and the margin of error being very small. But if you can get through all that, once you beat stage 5, you have finally defeated the Dodo! Anyway, when you beat the game, my favorite bit right here is the text. As many of you know, a lot of classic and modern games used to have typos in the end. Donut Dodo purposefully does this in reference to Ghost and Goblins for NES. It's funny, it fits the game's aesthetics, and I genuinely love it. When you dig into the mechanics of how this game plays, you'll notice hints of other arcade classics. For example, you have to collect all the items on the stage while avoiding enemies, just like Popeye or Burger Time. But if you were to go for the highest score, you can opt to collect the donuts in a randomized order like Mappy for a combo bonus, rather than collecting all the items in one sweep. Not to mention a bonus timer that's always counting down incentivizing you to play faster, just like Donkey Kong. Sticking around on the attract screen will give off the generic blurbs of how to play in the cast of characters, but I always find the high score list to be quite charming. It's not subtle, but I honestly love the innocent callouts to other legendary arcade games. Seeing all this makes me wonder, how long have you been making games, and what's your personal history with video games? I started off as a bedroom programmer as a kid, on the Sinclair Spectrum 48K, the Timex Spectrum I think in the US. Later down the road I joined Ubisoft to work on Rayman and other games, but ended up missing those early years. When mobile gaming appeared, a new indie market emerged, creative, fun, and very similar to the one I had known back in the day. Development tools were becoming accessible too, so I took out the opportunity and went solo, making it my full-time job, which I'm very passionate about. Overall, Donut Dodo should be considered a modern classic that should be in every arcade fan's collection. The gameplay is smooth, the music is an absolute banger, and there was definitely a lot of love put into this. With that said, what do you plan to do with Donut Dodo in the future? What has been on my mind for quite some time though is a genuine 8-bit port of the game for the NES, including a boxed physical release on cartridge. The incredibly talented Cosmic Gem would also love to rework the music for the 2A03 chip. I don't know if I'll find time to work on this version, but it'd surely be a fun challenge. Thanks a lot for the great interview. Stay in touch. Well, I really hope that comes to fruition in the future. Seeing it run on a real NES hardware would be phenomenal. Again, I want to give a big thanks to Zaposh for letting me interview him. If you're interested in getting the game or the soundtrack, links will be below for anyone interested. And remember, stay foxy. Hey guys, so thanks for watching my first review of 2023. I worked really hard this time to try to make something that was a lot more uniform, but still keeps to my own aesthetics. I don't want to keep you too long, so I want to say thank you very much to all my wonderful supporters on Patreon and Ko-fi, and all of you that have watched thus far in the video. Thank you once again, and I will see you all next time.